Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you ready to share four things each we've learned in marriage? I am. Let's do it. All right. Hey there, it's Bashti Sarah. Welcome back to Post Blog. If this is your first time listening, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like button, follow button, share button, all the buttons to stay connected with the Post Blog podcast. And for those of you who this is not your first time, welcome back. Hey guys, today I have my lovely husband joining me on my manly husband (laughs) joining me today on this episode's podcast. And it's actually a bonus episode because we're done with season two and we're going to be jumping into season three, uh, maybe next week, maybe the week after. I don't know, because we actually have some big news to share, or at least I have some big news to share. And, um, but you guys will find out about that maybe in this episode, maybe later. We'll see. Anyways. So today we're going to talk about eight things that we've learned for each things that we've learned in our eight months of marriage so far um yes honey i just want to say that that big news that you're going to announce they think it's a child and no we're not (laughs) pregnant i just wanted to say that (laughs) yeah i actually mentioned that to a friend the other day and i was like yeah i have something huge i want to tell you and she's like you're pregnant i'm like no we're we're not so yeah Thanks for clarifying that. We we are definitely not pregnant. We're going to be waiting a hot minute before that happens. Or if the Lord says jokes on you, then yeah, the jokes on us. But then we're, we're going to be really mad at God. <laughs> no, we won't because it's the Lord's will. And, you know, God will always bring us through whatever it is. So the first thing I wanted to say that I've learned in marriage so far, I'm going to start out. Um, not that I lead. I'll just say that. The man leads in the marriage, but well, let me go first. okay, fine. You go first. <laughs> um, the first thing is how to tease you to make you tick. Okay. Um, but seriously, when to joke and when not to, um, I think that strengthens your marriage and, uh, it's fun to joke around and have a good time with you, even just at home or while we're driving or at restaurants, whatever, and just be goofy, be dorks and be kids. And it's really fun. That's funny. You mentioned that because my first, what I've learned in marriage is that marriage is really fun. And I wrote down that I love dancing in the kitchen together or annoying each other until we cry and until we like laugh cry. (laughs) What would you rate my dancing? We shall not speak of that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Traveling together, trying new things together or late night movie watching, building pallets in the living room because we don't have a couch. So we just make a huge pallet and we lay there and we watch movies and um, binge watching Survivor. I think that has been a huge highlight. And I can't remember what weekend it was. I'm pretty sure it was like a holiday weekend, but we binge watch Survivor and we were bums. We're typically not bums or super busy people, but we were like, you know what? Forget it. Let's just have fun. YOLO. And we ordered in, <laughs> we door dashed probably that entire weekend, watched Survivor and we did puzzles. So, you know, marriage is fun. And 1010 recommend it's one of the greatest things you can possibly do in life and like you said we get to be kids together and just have fun and laugh you set me up with this podcast to make make me fall more in love with you okay. number two stand your ground when you need to but letting things go also goes a long way picking your battles is the best way to say that yeah. it's a maturity thing where even just in the first eight, nine months of marriage, I've had to let things go. And typically I would battle every little thing that frustrated me. But now I'm just like, wow, that really makes me mad. And then I forget about it. And then some things I'm like, that can't happen again. I need to discuss it with Vashti. And that brings in communication. So that's a cliche, but really and truly picking your battles coincides with communication. I think that's really important. Yeah, That's funny. Again, I think we, I think you maybe looked at my list of things. For those of you who are listening, I probably didn't mention this, but we came up with our own lists on our own. We didn't 
talk about it. We came up with our own, you know, what we learned. And it's funny that we've been learning the exact same things. So my second thing is conflict resolution, when to choose your battles. And uh, in our first couple months of marriage, like we had, I think one of the biggest disagreements was making the bed. (laughs) And your nose is flaring already. (laughs) So I grew up always making my bed. I have a routine. I make my bed every morning and I like going to bed at night with it made. Jared, on the other hand, think that is absolutely ridiculous because, you know, what's the point? You you want to chime in on this? Don't let her spew any more lies. She likes to put 20 pillows on the bed when she makes it. And then every evening, I have to take 20 pillows off before I can lay my head on the pillow and go to sleep. So don't let her to lie to you anymore. Well, it's not that. Also mention, remember that Sunday when we were going to church and then we almost missed church because I wanted to make the bed. You sat on the bed and then I like try to make it up again. And you're like, are you for real? You just sat on the bed. To sum up, <laughs> Vashti prioritizes pillows on the bed over Jesus. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not it. Anyways, they can choose their battles. Um, yeah, I um, we almost didn't go to church. I was like, well, fine, I'm not going to church. And then Jared was like, that answer alone makes me know you need to go to church. And this brings me back to point number two, pick your battles. And that was a war. <laughs> it was a bad war. <laughs> but we learned, we learned. And to be honest, you know, we did counseling, premarital counseling before we got married, and we talked about how to resolve conflict. And I didn't realize that that wasn't just a suggestion, like the tools that we learned in counseling. It was, you got to implement this or y'all are going to struggle. And we haven't struggled, but we've learned, we've seen how all these different tools in premarital counseling just have come up and we've had to choose. It was ultimately a choice. I feel more so for me because you are great at conflict resolution. I'm not. I like to brush things under the rug. Quit shaking your head. (laughs) I like to brush things under the rug and pretend like nothing ever happened and, you know, have a little bit of attitude here and there. Stop. (laughs) But uh, yeah. So number three, you go. Number three, and I'm not being funny. I'm being serious. Make sure you've eaten after work before you speak to each other. Because being hangry leads to so many meaningless arguments and bickering and it's not worth it and you're going to say things that you don't mean and that you have to waste your entire evening apologizing over and that goes for both of us and that's just a waste of time on both our parts when we could be enjoying the evening so if you're hungry or you had a bad day maybe get a little bite to eat or a snack and that's so practical but that goes for everyone i know everyone needs their chips their takis their <laughs> eggs or their fried jacks and if you don't know what a fried jack is it's a belizean breakfast like bread type thing that jared really likes but would you say would you also say on that note to always order extra fries to all the men that are listening in And I will also speak to the women, but the men first, all right? Men, if you go through the drive-thru and your girlfriend, your wife, whatever, says that she does not want said thing, okay, you ask her if she's hungry, go ahead and get it because otherwise she's going to eat yours. No, I'm not calling out Vashti. She never does that. Oh, please. Now, women, I'm speaking to you now. Can you just be honest and stop lying to your man and order what you want instead of stealing? That's two sins in one just by going through a drive through So don't do that. That's my advice. <laughs> wow. You just, you came prepared to roast the women. Roast us. Anyways, I've gotten better, right? Have I gotten better at that? Crickets. Okay. I have not gotten better. (laughs) Okay. So the third thing that I've learned in marriage is have your own hobbies and have hobbies you do together. It's so important to have your personal time and to respect each other's personal time. So Jared has, for those of you who don't know, he has Canto Shark. He does personal training. He does all these things on the side. And you know, that's his time for himself. And I need to respect that. I need to know that's his quality time for him, his Jared time. And he also has time to hang out with friends because I don't want him to lose 
who he is. Yes, we're married. Yes, we're one. But at the same time, if it's always be next to me, be with Vashti, give me all the attention, then Jared's going to be frustrated with me, one, which I'm saying this not because it's it, it has happened, but I'm saying this because I've seen it happen in other people's relationship and I've learned from other people wiser than I am far beyond my years and their advice too. that give your man time and men give your women their time. Let her have her hobby. If she doesn't have a hobby, encourage her to have a hobby. My hobby is writing. I enjoy it. I enjoy podcasting. I enjoy meeting with women one on one and talking about life. So do your thing and encourage people or encourage your spouse or your significant other to do their thing. But also find a thing that you both enjoy doing together. For us, we enjoy going to the gym. We enjoy, I guess, maybe trying new foods. We enjoy traveling together. But one of our things every single day or most days, we have a pretty tight routine. We go to the gym together. We're probably not doing the exact same thing at the gym together, but that's our time. And that hobby, that what you do together builds a stronger relationship. It opens the door for more intimate communication and it allows for quality one-on-one time. So that's, I think that's huge. That's one of the most powerful points I think that you've made so far in that I heard this quote recently and I'm going to paraphrase it here. When you get married, if you have to give up your goal for your spouse, your life goal, or you're changing it to smaller goals because you got married, then they're not the right person for you. And if you're able to keep your goals, whatever it is, and you get married and you can still do those things, your marriage is going to thrive and you more than likely are going to achieve your goals. So if you're married right now, and you're not working on your goals, whether you've been married a year or 10 years, the time to start is now to work on those. And by you individually working on your goals, it'll help your marriage. That's good. So what's your fourth one, honey? My fourth one is I've learned how to be a husband. And what I mean by that is taking responsibility for taking care of the house, locking up the doors before bed, handling car issues when we got a flat tire randomly driving down the highway and it blew and God saved us because it blew right at the exit for Costco and they had plenty of tires in stock and learning and seeking ways and being consistent and loving you. I've learned how to love you better and in more ways, which has strengthened our marriage. And I don't want to lose that because I've seen other couples lose that. And I see that when you stop doing that, you go down and I want to always go up. I've learned that by doing my manly duties, Vashti respects me more. And by the women doing the God-given women's duties, that might rub people the wrong way. But at the end of the day, our relationship is great because we're doing what God intended for the man to do, which is take care of the manly business and women taking care of the womanly business. And if you follow those roles, I know that might trigger, but if you follow the roles, then your marriage or your relationship will thrive. And if you're not happy right now, maybe that's a simple thing that you can change in your relationship, which is follow what God gave you. And maybe just maybe it'll help y'all. And to, to add on to that, I told Jared, every time I see him, take out the trash or deal with her car issues or even lock up the door. He has his, he has his routine at night to keep us safe, to keep our home safe. It makes me tremendously attracted to him, like crazy attracted to him. To s- <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have not said that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Anyways, but whenever you take out the trash and I see your muscles poking out, I'm like, oh, my gosh, keep it going. Keep taking out the trash. So Like Jared said, you know, I personally believe this is not something that I've been convinced by. I wholeheartedly believe that you as a female have a role in your marriage. You as a man have a role in your marriage. There's certain things that a man can do that a woman cannot do. There's certain things that a woman can do that a man cannot do. And we need to respect those roles. Whenever we start overstepping 
boundaries, then that's where conflict comes in. That's where the loss of respect comes in. And then you lose attraction for your spouse. So I know we're just eight months in. We've learned and we're learning a lot. But to be honest, if you've lost attraction to your husband or your wife, maybe just maybe, like Jared said, go towards your your role in marriage. Do what your role is. And it doesn't it's not it doesn't take rocket science to figure that out. Um, my last thing I'll share is to challenge and cheer each other on. Like I said, Jared has his personal business, his work goals. I have my blog, my podcast and different things that I'm working on. Challenge each other and in challenging each other, know when to pause your life to be there for your spouse. So last week, was it last week I had a, a meltdown? Okay. So last week I had a meltdown And because I'm working on some projects and I just got so frustrated, so overwhelmed. And I came home and Jared had his stuff that he needed to do. He had orders that he needed to get out. He had to go to the post office to ship those orders. He had to contact his people. And he literally paused his life and let me have my moment. And I want to encourage y'all that if you want to be a supportive spouse, learn to pause your life when necessary. This might be TMI, but something that Jared does whenever I'm overwhelmed is he'll have me sit on his lap and he'll just embrace me. That's the perks of marrying someone 6'7 and me being 5'1. But (laughs) um, it's it's so important and it made me feel extremely loved. And I ended up writing him a, a note after that, letting him know how huge that was for me, that he paused his life. He paused his crazy, busy to do list just to give me a moment to cry and a moment to encourage me. And then he prayed for me as I was sitting on his lap. He, you know, said a prayer and an encouragement and said, you know what? We got this. You're going to make it. I know you're overwhelmed, but you know, God's going to bring us through. So yeah, know uh, when to challenge, cheer each other on and to pause to help your spouse out. Any last words, honey, as we wrap this up? I love being married to you. And it's been a wild, crazy, amazing nine months, is it? This month will be nine months. This month will be nine months. Uh, A year's coming up. We'll take a one-year vacation. And we've accomplished so much. And we've learned to live with little, which has been really important for us in the goal of living under our means. We have goals that we want to achieve. And we're both striving every single day for those. And it's been so much fun. And you're the perfect person for me to have married. And I'm super honored to be on your podcast as always. And hopefully we were able to speak some sort of life into a person or a relationship where maybe they can make a couple changes just on the couple things that we've learned so far. And we're going to learn so much more and not that we're experts because we're not, but just a few things that we've learned um, that have helped us already. And I just want to say congrats on two full complete seasons of the podcast. If you're listening and you've gotten this far, go send Vashti a message because she works tirelessly. She records these in our closet and she doesn't have a full recording studio yet, but go send her a message and say, you know what? You worked really hard and I see all your work and I am so proud of you. So I think that I echo that. And if you're hearing this, just take the time and go message her because she's spent a lot of time and effort and speaking life into people. Thank you, baby. Well, that means the world. And um, I'm always honored to have you on the podcast. So that's it, guys. That wraps up season two and season three will be coming out. And I guess y'all will find out what that big announcement is maybe in next week's episode Or if you follow my blog, maybe you'll find out there. In the meantime, see y'all. It's not a baby. (laughs) That's it for today, guys. Thank you for joining me on Post Blog. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like button, follow button, share button. All the buttons to stay connected with the Post Blog podcast. Same time, same place next week. I love y'all. But remember, God loves you most.